Thank you very, very much, uh, Kavi, and magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Welcome uh, to the British residents, and thank you all so very, very much for making the time to join us this evening for what is our annual World Press Freedom Day uh, event. It's, a, it's something that we really care about and we want to do on an annual basis, so um, those of you that um, uh, enjoy tonight, please come back next year. <laughs> so, um, as Camille said, we're incredibly honored to have an amazing uh, panel of uh, journalists and experts this evening that are going to be taking questions from the crowd. In fact, we've already crowdsourced questions, so we want this event to be very, very inclusive, and we want to make sure you have the opportunity to ask the questions that matter to you. And we're absolutely delighted to have an amazing facilitator as well in Christian Esguerra. But of course, today's event comes at a, context, at a context that is rather worrisome when it comes to trends in media freedom. It comes just a few days after the government of Israel decided to close down Al Jazeera, raising concerns about the attitudes of uh, towards free speech. It comes at a time when the Russian Duma has criminalized factual reporting. International correspondents have been arrested often accused of espionage, and the Kremlin has blocked access to trustworthy and independent media outlets. But this is not just the case in countries at war, and indeed not just in developing countries. Liberty's Media Freedom Report 2024 highlighted that media freedom and pluralism are flailing across Europe too. In the last few years, we have seen heavy media ownership concentration and shrinking of media plurality in Europe. And it would be remiss of me, not to mention that we too in the UK have had our problems. Where too many journalists, in fact any one journalist is too many, currently working in the UK have not felt safe from threats, abuse, and physical harm. And as a result of that, in October last year, we've had to issue new measures to support the safety of journalists. More broadly, Reporters Without Borders in its 2024 survey released last week spoke of worrisome trends in media freedom. In particular, they outlined that different actors, including politicians across a wide range of countries, are targeting the media. Some by fueling distrust of journalists or discrediting them and threatening them. Others are orchestrating a takeover of the media ecosystem. Others are involved in disinformation and propaganda. As for the Philippines, well, you won't be surprised to hear that there are challenges here too. The Philippines went down two notches in this year's Reporters Without Borders ranking. It is now ranked 134 out of 180. President Marcos is committed to the role of journalists in a democracy. Just on Friday, he said that the work of journalists serves as our strongest defense against misinformation and fake news. He said, now more than ever, their commitment to their work is crucial. We believe in that, but that commitment has yet to translate into reality. The government has yet to ensure that the cycle of violence and intimidation against journalists remains um, uh, is, is addressed. We know that 117 journalists were killed here in the last 30 years. Impunity is a huge challenge, as in the case with extrajudicial killings of all kinds. And indeed, just this week, I think the person that killed Percy Lapid was charged, but the mastermind behind the murder is still at large, as is that for Juan Ramelon and Jerry Ortega. At the regional level, many journalists are also the target of threats and lawsuits, while women journalists are subjected to specific gender-based threats, such as rape, cyber harassment, disclosure of personal details, and so forth. And here as elsewhere, there are signs to indicate that some journalists avoid certain topics and self-centered as a direct result or fear of being threatened or subjected to hate speech. On top of that, we saw the closure of CNN Philippines in January, and that is a reminder of the challenges the media industry face in becoming sustainable in the internet state, in the internet age. Yet, we all know that a diverse and free media environment is crucial for democracy because we rely on independent news outlets to hold our politicians accountable and keep us informed. 
a variety of reputable, unbiased, established news sources expose citizens to a plurality of perspectives and issues. This improves resilience against disinformation and is an antidote to the divisiveness that plagues social media and online news. I'm sure I speak on behalf of all of us this evening when I say that now more than ever, we need a credible, independent and reliable medium. The UK is committed to this. We are committed to ensure the free flow of reliable and trustworthy information. And we are seeking to deliver on that commitment here in the Philippines. We have a few programs in that space and many of you here have been involved in some of our programs. And we complement our programs in many ways, including through our diplomatic engagements with members of Congress and with the government. And one of the things we also do is this annual event. It is intended to create a safe space for dialogue, for information sharing, for networking, and hopefully it is also a space for new ideas for all of us to come together and reflect on. This year's theme for World Press Freedom Day is uh, focused on global environmental crisis. As the UK Embassy, of course, we believe that the media has a critical role in protecting the planet. Nonetheless, we have gone rogue this year. We have decided to focus on the other big issue of the year, namely elections. This year, half of the world's population is heading to the polls, and this will have huge consequences on democracies across the world, and indeed on each of us. And next year, here in the Philippines, we have our own midterm elections, which will be critical, not least in the barn. In the lead up to these elections, the media has a critical play, role to play in educating and in informing and indeed counterbalancing disinformation. Yet so much is happening to the media landscape. New media have radically altered the way that government institutions operate, the way that political leaders communicate, the manner in which elections are run. So we felt it was essential and indeed timely to take the time to ask ourselves a few critical questions. So this is what tonight is all about. We hope that the panel we have in front of you this evening will help in shining a light on some of these key challenges and also help provide some answers to these very tricky questions. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoy the evening.